Hey, hey, hey family, it's your girl Evelyn and I am back with another video. And today I decided to create my own tag. Now I have not seen this tag. I don't know if it exists. However, I had this idea because of a situation that I ran into in the makeup world. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this. So typically I'm not a fan of makeup rules, which is like, oh, you shouldn't wear this shade or you can't do this or that's not how you do that. But these are 10 like beauty rules or makeup rules or beauty standards, if you will, that I wish existed. So this is all fun. Um, and I'm going to want to know what beauty standards do you wish existed as well. So let's get into it. I have 10 here. If you see me looking down, it's because I wrote them out. I have a little note card. Okay. And yeah, you know, this, this is a little bit, of, you know, a little tongue in cheek, a little brands pay attention, you know, just a, a little bit of a, a little bit, a little bit of all of it mixed together. Okay. So the first things first is I think that every single makeup brand should offer foundation sample cards. Now, let me say this. The reason why I feel that way is because Lisa Eldridge, when she dropped her foundation, she dropped sample cards of like four shades at a time. Like, so for every different skin tone category, you could buy for, I think, two or three dollars, right? You could buy the sample card. And so you could sample multiple different shades of the foundation before you committed to buying the full bottle. I thought it was genius, right? Because I was like, how many times have we bought a foundation and, you know, we tried our best to shade match. We read the description, we read the undertones, you know, we used their shade finder only to get in this like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And so being able to just make a small investment of two or three dollars to test out the foundation not only will save us a lot of money, but will save brands a lot of money with returns or people being dissatisfied with the product and all that kind of stuff. And let me see, do I have any of her sample cards left? I don't know if I do. Um, I don't think so. I think I, I think I, I think I figured out my shade and I used them up, but they were fantastic. Okay, so I think every single brand that has liquid foundations should offer sample cards as like a standard across. The beauty industry i just think there would be a lot less waste on both ends okay number two okay and these are not ranked in any particular order these are just things that i have thought about a lot probably more than i should as a consumer but you know part part of the business entrepreneur person to me is like y'all need to get it together number two i think that as a minimum not as a maximum as a minimum there should be six shade categories at a minimum and what I mean by that is there should be fair light tan medium deep and rich at a minimal if they want to go past that here's why because a lot of times when people say deep it's too light for me I'm in the rich category okay and there are there are probably eight shades past me okay so I feel like whatever you do you should have at least a minimum of six categories and then the different shades and undertones in that category, but at least six. If you're here to hit, hit me with a fair light, medium tan, uh, d and, and a deep, no, I need deep rich, right? So six categories minimum across the board. Now, this third one, th this is the one, okay? So recently I was in Nordstrom and I was buying some, uh, I was buying a blush and a lip product from the Gucci counter. And when I was there, the representative or, or one of the, 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 the gentleman working the counter worked for Gucci Beauty. And he was like, hey, you know, I would love to get your feedback on some of the products, whatever. I work for the company. So, you know, I would love to pass anything along. And one of the things I said was, I said, being inclusive in beauty goes past foundation. OK, and I'm normally not a big like, oh, you need to make shades for me. I'm just kind of like if you don't if you don't make my shade, then you just might not, you must not want my money and I will go spend my money for that product elsewhere. And so one of the things I told him was I was like, here's a rule of thumb that I think all companies should follow. 
is that your deepest bronzer should be darker than your darkest shade of foundation. Like to me, this is common sense, right? Like whatever your foundation range is, okay? And Gucci has an amazing foundation range, right? So I'm, I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna give them two thumbs up on that. I'm not necessarily a fan of the formula for my particular skin tone, I mean type, but the shade range is there. I need a bronze, I need bronzers that go past the darkest shade. Otherwise, they're not gonna show up. If your darkest bronzer is not even light enough to be, I mean, is not even deep enough to be a finishing powder on me, then we've missed the mark. Conversely, conversely, if I was somebody on the lighter skin tone, I would be like, your lightest shade of concealer should be lighter than your lightest foundation. Like th to me, this makes common sense. Y'all let me know in the comments, like, does that make sense to you? Like, obviously, if you made a, if you made a foundation for me, I need a powder, I need a bronzer, I need a concealer. So make it, make, make it a complete makeup wardrobe, right? So your deepest bronzer should be darker than your deepest shade of foundation. And conversely, your lightest shade of concealer should be lighter than your lightest shade of foundation. Okay, number four, and this is this is this is going to be a controversial one. I don't think people should keep putting bronzers in face palettes. And let me tell you why. You are automatically excluding five other categories. It doesn't it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what shade you put in in the face palette. There are going to be several other face categories that we talked about the six that cannot use it. And more often than not Okay, it's not deep enough. And let me tell you, and this is this is this is not just non-black on brands because I have this palette here I'm about to show you. I have this palette here from Uma uh, Ooh. Uma Beauty, Uma Beauty. Anyway, I had wanted this palette for a very long time. Got it last year, right? When I tell you this bronzer who what Child, that's not even a face powder for me, okay? Highlighter, the, even the deep highlighter is too light. Obviously, the lightest highlighter is too light. Um, and the blush barely kind of shows up. And this is a black-owned brand. We've also talked about the black-owned brands that don't make bronzers deep enough for me, which is, is strange. So this is not calling out any particular brand. I'm not even calling them out specifically. My whole thing is if you are going to do a face palette and you want to put a bronzer in it then i need six variations minimum and that's and and the deeper one needs to be dark enough so that the darkest foundation that you offer can use it again this is this is common sense to me but i i'm just not a fan of bronzers or highlighters either because here's the thing right when it comes to face palettes i think i've told y'all this before when it comes to highlighters I thought I was not a fan of highlighters because everybody wants to give a dark skinned girl a golden highlight. That's like saying you want to give a light skinned woman a silver highlight. I, I, I'm not gold. I'm brown. Okay. So I need the highlighter to be brown. Okay. Not just deep gold and not even just copper. I need it to be brown. Same thing. Right. So, but it's so, but if you're going to do that, if you don't make a face palette, then all the components, you need several variations and all the components in there need to work for the different ranges. Okay, here is number five. And again, these are my personal, these are my personal beauty standards that I wish existed. You should carry every shade that you offer of something in store. Every shade that you offer in store. And so if you're like, oh, that's expensive, figure it out, right? It's 2023, I don't, I don't really care. Because what you're doing is you're passing that inconvenience and that expense on to your client or customer. So for example, if I go into a store and I want to get something that's in my complexion, they're like, oh, we don't have it in store. I'd have been to three or four different stores. And this is, this is different if it's like sold out, right? Like if it just sold out because it was popular versus you don't carry it in store. So let me get this right. So somebody else can drive to the store and pick up what they need easily, but then I'm going to have to go online, possibly wait, pay for shipping, dot, 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 dot. I hope it doesn't arrive broken, all that kind of stuff because you don't want to carry it in store. I think not. 99% of the time, if if there's a product that I would like to try and my shade is not in store, 
I'm never going to buy it. I'm going to go, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go spend my money with somebody else who carries my shade in store. It's a thing, right? Okay, that's number five. Number six, eyeshadow palettes should come in different variations of the same palette. Let me tell you, when Natasha Denona released this glam face palette, now she only did two, okay? When I tell you these shades in here all work, they look a little... Let me go down here. They they look a little light on camera, but when I tell you all of these shades work on my skin tone, and let me tell you what's so interesting about making deeper palettes, right? Is that anybody can use them. Like I knew a I know a lot of people who are not brown skin, not African American, who preferred the deeper palette over the lighter palette. You know who who's doing this? Sydney Grace. They will release like uh a fair light version of a eyeshadow palette and then like a deep dark version because it's the transition shades right it's the way the transition shades show up so if you if you drop a palette and all the transition shades are like beige and tan that's half the palette or that many shades i off rip cannot use but if you say you know what the colors are fine but the, these transition shades or the depth of certain shades I'm going to make one a little bit deeper. Let me let me I'm just I'm just throwing this all around. Let me put this back in the drawer. I'm going to make one a little bit deeper so that darker, richer skin tones. Like again, common sense, right? Common sense. And you know, coming to maybe like that's expensive. I don't know what to tell you. It's 2023, figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I it's almost, we don't care. <laughs> okay. Number seven. Okay. Tell me the undertones of the lipsticks. Let me tell you. So Pat McGrath recently came out with a line of lippies and even the package is different. So the formula is the same, but there are the shades in one color packaging that have a cooler undertone and there are shades in one color packaging that have warmer undertones. And I think this is genius because a lot of times I can't really tell based on the model, based on the arm swatch, even based on the description. But like, if you tell me these are the cool lippies and these are the warm lippies, it's like the same thing with having the foundation, um, uh, sample cards it's like it's just so much easier there's so many times where I've gotten a lippy and I'm like oh this is much cooler than I thought it was going to be um or much warmer than I thought it was going to be depending on your skin tone and I I don't love it had I known that it was going to be this cool or this warm depending on what you're looking for um you could have made a different decision like for example I have this Chanel lippy right here Okay, this is the Rouge Coco Flash in number 56 moment, right? Now, I love this, but it is definitely, I've got a little residue on my hand. It is definitely much cooler than I thought. I thought it was going to be more neutral, okay? So, I don't wear it as often as I would like to because it's cool tone. I have a neutral undertone. I need it to be like neutral or warm. Otherwise, it's particularly on the lips. Otherwise, I'm going to be looking like death ran over. And listen, I know that that, I know amongst our, our girlfriends that that gray beige lip with the liner trend is in. I don't like it for me. Gray lips, gray beige lips, not my thing. The girls who rock it, they rock it. It never looks good to me. Okay, and it doesn't matter. As long as they love it, they love it. I don't like a gray beige lip. Okay, I don't, I, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so let's get into the next one. And this comes to complexion products. I've already talked about there should be at least six categories. But here's the thing. I also think that each, each level should at least have three undertones, cool, neutral, and warm. Sometimes people release stuff and it's like everything's yellow undertone or everything's warm or everything's neutral or everything's cool. And it's like, again, there's a whole population of people, and it's not just about race, this is about undertones, that it's like if everything has a golden undertone, I'm going to be out here looking like 
a sunflower. Okay. Now there's nothing wrong with something, but like I, golden does not work on me. Okay. And so like, I'll give an example, like the Des- Danessa Myers blurring balm powder. Y'all know how I feel about that product. Okay. I love it. I, I use the universal shade as a, um, as a primer. Like I've already gone through one repurchased another one. I absolutely love it. And I would love to wear one of the colored ones, right? And I know it's very sheer, but I'm a neutral undertone and it's all, like all the shades have a golden undertone. And it's just like, even sheared out, that's not gonna look good on my skin tone, right? It's gonna make me look this weird, like, it's gonna make me look green is what I've realized. It's like, a, it's like yellow and gray got together and had a green baby. Anything with a yellow undertone, don't work on me. It goes gray green on me very, very quickly. So I feel like, as a beauty standard, whatever you're gonna release. So even if you even if you release something that has limited shades, I think the blowing balm powder has like 10 shades. Give me 30. <laughs> Cause I need three undertones. Okay. And again, people might be like, that's expensive. I don't care. Like I really want to use that blurring balm powder in the color, but I'm not gonna be out here looking green gray. Okay, so now, he, oh, this is the one, y'all. And tell me if you're feeling me on this. I feel like every mascara should come with a choose your own wand option. Think about this, right? Think about this. How many times have you had a mascara where you where you like you really enjoy the formula of the mascara, but you're not in love with the wand or vice versa, right? And I, listen, I can't tell you how many times I'm like, ooh, that formula is really doing what I wanted to do, but I can't stand this wand, okay? I wish, I wish mascaras came with a little cap and then a choose your own adventure wand, right? You could, and then you could pick the wand that goes with it and be on your way, right? I would love that. Like, for example, I personally love a very, very skinny wand for my lower lashes, but I personally prefer a curved, um, quite large wand for my upper lashes, but it needs to be tapered so that I can get to the inside. Like, Too Faced Better Than Sex, as much as I that mascara will give you some big fat lashes, that wand is so big and bulbous that I can't even get to the inside of my eye, right? So... I don't buy it anymore because I hate the wand. Love the formula, hate the wand, right? If I could get that formula and choose my own wand, please, please. And that's what a lot of things, and some people may say, but the wand is what makes the formula work. Listen, everybody's lashes are different, okay? Let me choose my own wand. Let me choose my own adventure, okay? So that's a beauty standard that I wish um, existed. And I also... Very similar to the bronzers. I this is this is my last one, which is highlighters should have an extensive range. I can't tell you how many times people come out and they've got like two highlighters. Let me tell you who did it best. House Labs. House Labs came out with I believe ten highlighters, twelve highlighters, something like that, y'all. I told you I didn't think I liked highlighter until I got this a brown. Not gold, a brown highlight. A brown highlight. And there's another version. I could have got a slightly more neutral undertone brown highlight, which I may go back and get since I am neutral. I, 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 if you come out with one, there's nothing about my face that says champagne. <laughs> nothing. Nothing about my face has a sh- it can do champagne or like a light peachy color. Like, let me tell you, in this Hourglass palette, right, when they were like, we came out to be deeper. Let, let, let me show you something. You'd probably be like, Evelyn, that, that's a pretty deep highlighter. Look how gold that is. Where, where, look how this swatches on my skin. You see how light that is? That's not going to work. So then they came out with this, right? Now, the highlighter in here. What am I doing with this? This is even lighter. Where where am I going with this on my face? 
nowhere. Okay. This is even lighter. Straight ash on the skin. But if I let me let me swatch. I'm gonna swatch the house labs for you, and then I'm also going to swatch um, the fashion fair. I'm gonna swatch the house labs. Oh, I just. You see the difference? Let me swatch the fashion fair because that's what I have on today. I have on the fashion fair highlighter over my um, Gucci blush. Listen, I didn't think I was going to swatch anything in this in this uh, video. But first of all, there's a gold one in here. I'm not using it. Look at that color. That is a highlight for me. I'm going to swatch that one. Like, do you see? Do you see? You see, let me tell you, it's almost even better than the house labs because you almost can't. It's almost blended into my skin, right? Like I have to turn it. That's what I mean. That's a highlighter for me. Okay, that you can't see gold, you can't see champagne, you can't see peach, but you can tell I'm highlighted. Like, like let me just like even as I tap it on, you can't see it, but you can see the reflectiveness. Listen, it's a whole vibe. So, anyway, those are the 10 makeup rules, beauty standards that I wish existed. Let me know. Do you agree with any of them? Do you disagree? Do you have any that come to mind that you're like, I wish this was a thing? Uh, I would love to know. Okay. And if you are someone who creates YouTube videos, I would love for you to do your own video about however many beauty standards you wish is existed as well. So Anyway, I thought this would be fun and I will see you in my next video. Peace.